Today we're driving the 2021 Ford Explorer ST. This is a 400 horsepower all-wheel drive performance SUV from Ford. It has three rows, weighs about 4,700 pounds, costs about $58,000 as tested. We'll put all the details, specs, options in the description. So let's talk about this interior. This is a pretty nice space. Ford is doing a better job with their interiors these days. The materials feel good. All the buttons and switch gear are functional, accessible, well-placed. Everything feels pretty nice quality too. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit of a head scratcher is this vertical screen here in the center. On first impressions, you think, oh, this is a nice large screen. I'm going to be able to see all sorts of things well on here. Well, not really. It's vertical, so that means everything that has horizontal orientation, like Apple CarPlay and your reverse and 360 cameras, are just way too small. Like, I can barely even see what is in my reverse camera. It would almost be the same size if it were in my rearview mirror. Um, so I would like Ford to be able to maybe rearrange some of the, the things in here. We have parking sensors, which are barely useful in most situations uh, compared to like an actual physical camera that are taking up half the display. So anyway, kind of an interesting layout there, but functionally, this is a pretty nice screen. It seems to be relatively responsive. Uh, you have a lot of different settings and menu options that you can go in and customize to your preferences and taste. Uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that good stuff. So really no complaints there. You even have a quick access button for the camera display. But again, it's so small you can't really see a whole lot. Otherwise, the rest of this interior is pretty nice. We have Ford's rotary shifter, which I actually don't really mind. It is a bit tough to see what gear you're in sometimes in broad daylight, but you can see in the center display here, and just by feel, you get pretty used to it pretty quickly. Parking brake is very accessible. You have uh, auto hold button right there, which is very nice. All of your drive mode selections can be done down here. You have this uh, fully digital gauge cluster that shows a bunch of different animations when you change your drive modes. They're a little bit slow to respond and change, but that's okay. You get used to uh, kind of the motions and the timing with everything. Lots of physical climate control buttons. You have controls for the rear climate, which is great. You can control all that from the front. We get heated and cooled seats, a heated steering wheel. Not too hot either. It's a nice temperature that doesn't burn your hands or your butt off. We've got a little bit of storage here. A lot of places to put smartphones and devices, wireless charging down there with a USB type A and a USB C port along with a cigarette lighter port. All right, let's walk you around the outside of this Explorer ST. We also have a Bang & Olufsen sound system, which we will test a little bit later. And in this blue, this thing just looks like a cop car. It's pretty menacing looking, to be honest. It's a good looking SUV. We have the high-performance brake package on here, so a little bit larger brakes. This is a 3-liter twin-turbo V6, making 400 horsepower, 450 pound-feet of torque. It's rated to tow 5,600 pounds, so not a ton, but enough for most people who need to tow on occasion. You get a little tab right there that shows you where to lift the tailgate for to press the button. For a three-row SUV, you get a little bit more storage space behind that third row than you do in some other options, like the Lexus GX, for example. Um, and a, I think a usable third row, you could definitely squeeze an adult back there in the middle or kind of off to a side, and for kids, there wouldn't be any problems. Second row captain's chairs, a little bit more storage here on both sides below that deck lid. These have headrests that flip up right here. You can easily fold down this third row with these buttons right here. There we go. And you get a pretty decent amount of cargo space back here. Let's check out that second row of back seats. Easy fuel filler cap, which is really nice to use whenever you have to fill this thing up. Get some privacy screens on the side windows. Pretty nice looking captain's chairs. Let's throw this in the back here. We've got some armrest action. Pretty nice large panoramic sunroof too. 
very comfortable seating position, lots of adjustability. With the second row, we can move it forward, give the third row a little bit more space, or move it back and get just a bunch of leg room back here. I'm five foot 10, seated behind myself. I have tons of space. We have rear climate controls, heated seats for both sides, a couple USB ports, another AC outlet with a three prong plug and lots of space to put stuff. Rubber lined mats at the bottom that you can pull out and clean if you need to. Very nice for the family. Pretty usable, spacious SUV. And I was kind of surprised, this thing weighs less than the Mustang Mach-E, but it's so much bigger. Let's take a look under the hood at that three liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6. It's just a two X pull to lift it up. Don't have to go hunting for a latch. There it is, shoehorned in there. Set pretty far back behind that front axle. Pretty nice weight distribution. Can't really see a whole lot except for a bunch of plumbing. All right, let's take this thing for a drive. Pretty quick walk around. You guys are familiar with the Explorer. We also tested the Explorer Timberline Edition this week. Honestly, I think that's a little bit more of a uh, you know, of an appealing trim line for an Explorer, more off-road focused. That seems to make a little bit more sense than a performance Explorer, but you know what? Everyone has different preferences and uh, desires with their daily driver. And if you can only have one car and you want it to be a little bit quick, you also want to haul the family, this might be a pretty good option. All right, off we go. We're gonna start off in normal drive mode. We have Ford's 10-speed automatic. It's been pretty good this week. It's not as smooth as some of its latest iterations in the Bronco or maybe F-150 Raptor, but it still does a pretty good job giving you the gears that you want, utilizing the torque from this EcoBoost V6, and in sport mode, it changes its character a little bit under high-performance driving, which is pretty cool. You can hear this EcoBoost has a nice throaty sound to it. Some of that I'm sure is uh, played through the speakers or piped in somehow. Changing the drive modes can get a little bit confusing sometimes just because of how sluggish and laggy that center digital display is to change. We do get paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. They're a bit clumsy. Ah, there's kind of a jerkiness on downshifts and upshifts aren't terribly smooth either. You can hold the right paddle to put it back into drive. You get a pretty nice turning radius though. Let's do a launch control to start here. Turn off traction control. A little bit of a different traction control icon there, that's fun. Should be about five and a half seconds to zero to 60. It's no slouch. It's definitely a quick SUV. You can see there, sport modes downshifting for us under hard braking around a corner. settle things down and put it into eco mode. What does that do? Get an entirely different display. 
in pretty much every mode besides sport mode, you get this very tiny tachometer here to the left, and you can actually just go in the menus and turn that off if you, if you so desire. Steering is pretty light. Again, I love the shape of the steering wheel. That definitely helps add to the, the niceness and the nice feel of this car in the driver's seat. These seats are very comfortable. I have a nice driving position, great visibility all throughout. This A-pillar is a little bit big. It does block oncoming traffic occasionally, and in city environments, I'm finding myself having to look around it every now and then, but for the most part, visibility is pretty good in this Explorer. What other drive modes do we have? Slippery, trail, and deep snow sand. Tweaks traction control a little bit. Handling is pretty impressive. This is, after all, a rear wheel biased four wheel drive system. I am glad to finally see the Explorer based on a rear wheel drive platform. Honestly, when you're not using the paddle shifters, this is a pretty good transmission. It, it makes some nice shift decisions, and uh, yeah, it works well with this EcoBoost. It's not as smooth as some of the newer 10-speed iterations, like I said earlier, but it's not bad. It's not as bad as some F-150s that I've driven. It's kind of in the middle, and uh, I haven't minded it this week. Let's talk about ride quality. It's definitely on the stiffer side for a mid-size three-row SUV feels pretty average for a performance offering, not too stiff, it's not going to beat you up. Steering weight's up nicely got a little bit of feel with the front end. It's kind of a slippy day out today, so we can feel just a tad of scrub on those front tires. It's just a bit of safe understeer at the limit, but for the most part, you can kind of chuck this Explorer ST into a corner and it'll handle pretty predictably. Ford's done a pretty nice job with the suspension tuning here which I'm actually kind of surprised with. I expected this thing to be way too stiff, like they usually make their ST and performance products, but this is nice. All right, we're just gonna leave it in sport mode, because you can do that, and uh, daily drive it around and with the red gauges, which I think look kind of cool. So let's engage cruise control. We have Ford Copilot 360 Plus, and it's a really nice system, the lane keep keeps you really well centered between the lines and it doesn't really prompt you to hold the steering wheel too often. It gives you a little bit of leeway. It's a great system. It's definitely something I would check if I were doing some longer journeys or I had a longer commute in my Ford vehicle. Um, it does a nice job passing slower vehicles. Let's dip in behind this semi truck and see how it negotiates a pass up to speed. Seems to find the center of the lane well too. So we're slowing down. We've got the closest following distance. You can adjust that very easily here. And it shows a Mustang in front of you as the vehicle you're following. So we're gonna put our turn signal on. We're beginning to accelerate. Pretty good. I don't feel like I'm gonna be holding up traffic too much using this system and this Explorer ST. You can very easily turn the lane keep on and off, which is great. Physical controls. I mean, even though we have an iPad Tesla looking center display, Ford still gives us phys physical buttons for everything else, which I think is just great. Yeah, I do really like the ergonomics on the steering wheel. The menu buttons are easy to navigate even though the screen isn't the most responsive, it's 
know, it's pretty straightforward. There aren't a lot of menus or deep options within it. And the cruise control buttons are really well laid out. You can pretty much use everything without having to look down at it, which is great. Let's just out these brakes. wide tires. You will get some inside wheel spin that will trip up the traction control system occasionally if you're really accelerating hard out of a 90 degree corner. This is not like super handling all-wheel drive. It's not really distributing torque from side to side on the rear axle. But it does have a display where you can see where it's distributing its intelligent four-wheel drive system, whether it's front to back. So if we do a launch here, for example, we can see where it's sending power. It's pretty evenly distributed, maybe a little bit more rear bias. turn traction control off and see how it does from a dig with some steering lock. Let's turn traction control off. We've got to hold for quite a while to turn off a track and see how it does around a corner here. skip from the rear end there. <laughs> you definitely feel that rear bias around corners under throttle. I like that. Well done, Ford. Let's put it into manual. this thing around a little bit. <laughs> not bad. Not too bad. Again, I mean, for a three-row SUV, it handles well. Does it handle well overall? I mean, it's limited by physics, its size, maybe not as uh, exciting to drive as the Durango SRT, especially without a V8, but I think a pretty nice overall performance SUV. Oops, I accidentally just changed into neutral trying to switch drive modes. <laughs> All right, so how can we sum up this Explorer ST? You know, it's about what I expected. Maybe a little bit softer, a little bit more comfortable. I, I drove one of these a few years ago when it first came out, and I don't know if it just had a ton of tire pressure in it or what the deal was, but it was way too stiff. So I don't know if Ford has tweaked the suspension or our tire pressures are pretty low today, so that might contribute to a little bit better ride quality. Um, you know, if you want a fast, good-looking Explorer, this is a great option. You don't mind paying the extra premium for that 400 horsepower 3 liter twin turbo V6. Personally, I think something like the Explorer Timberline Edition is a better way to go, a better way to spend your money. You get a little bit more of an off road oriented package, you get some skid plates, it looks cool. This is kind of the other end of the, of the spectrum. 
and I respect it because it is a decent performance SUV offering. There's a lot to like here. The packaging is great. The usability is great. Um, this Bang & Olufsen sounds pretty nice too. We'll test that in a little bit after we kind of wrap things up here. But um, would I buy this over a Durango with a V8? No. Do I miss the old lightweight hot hatch ST products? 100%. I'd probably take this over a uh, Ford Edge ST. Just that rear wheel bias makes this a little bit more of an enjoyable SUV to drive. And there is a lot of space in this thing. There's a lot to like here. And if you can really only have one car and you want that big family car to be also a fun vehicle to drive, this is a pretty decent option. There isn't a whole lot that's disagreeable with this Explorer ST. So anyway guys, I think that'll sum things up. Let's give you guys a quick Bang & Olufsen sound system test. Uh, we'll go in here to our very tiny Apple CarPlay display and start things up. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned on the Winding Road Magazine YouTube channel for more videos on this. We'll probably do a day drive, a night drive, show you what it looks like in all lighting scenarios. We'll walk around this one more time and that'll be a wrap. <laughs> this blue, it really does look like a cop car. <laughs>